So you learned about DDD aggregates as a consistency boundary and you're like, bring it on, I'm ready for anything. Let me ruin the mood for you, designing aggregates is really hard. There's a lot of room to get it wrong and this will cause you more problems than it actually solves. But I got your back as always, in my opinion there are only three principles you need to keep in mind when designing aggregates, so stay with me and start mastering DDD aggregate modeling right now. Hey there and welcome to the Code Wrinkles channel. In this video I would like to introduce you to three very important principles that would guide you on your journey to master DDD aggregate modeling. But before we get started I want to emphasize that there is already a video introducing you to what domain driven design aggregates are. So if you didn't take a look at this video I will leave the link to that video in the description of this one and here in the corner up right so you can go to that watch the video and come back here because even the code that we are using is actually the code that we left off during the other video let's get started so the very first principle is keep aggregates as simple as possible now of course the question is what does this even mean how can we keep aggregate simple so if we take a look at what we have right now in our code like we have this concept of project and when it comes to simplicity i would like to draw your attention on something that actually i did a little bit wrong in a previous video but i did it on purpose and we have here a list of, or an innumerable of employee which are the project members so remember we have the concept of project we want to build the project management app and we have the employees and then we say here hey we have an innumerable of employee and these employees are the project members. Now, regarding those project members, we have some business rules, some business logic to it. When we complete a project, what we also want to do is clear the member list. And the other thing that we want to do is we want to, to be able to add new project members. So we have this method, add project member, where we take in an employee and here we have a business rule and our employees count, like the members count should be less than or equals to the head count cap. And if that is the case, we simply add the employee to our members. And that seems to be straightforward and okay. However, there are some problems to that. The first problem is, for instance, when the business comes and says, hey, on a project, the employees, they have a role. So an employee could be, for instance, maybe a project management manager, it could be a QA, it could be a developer, or it could be a BA, it could be anything like depending on the business needs or what the application wants to do with, with, with those project members and how the business actually sees them. If they have a role, we have a problem right now because to add a role, we should come maybe here in this employee class and add here a certain role. However, that would cause us a lot of other problems because the concept of an employee here might be a little bit, well, wider than what we actually need on our project. So this would mean that just coming here and adding that role is not really possible. And the other problem to what we have or to the setup that we have right now is that, for instance, if we want to change an information or part of the employee information, like part of the employee state, like for instance, let's say maybe we have done a mistake when we have created the employee in our system and we set a wrong date hire and somebody or some user of the application wants to change that. Now, the setup that we have right now, which has this project as an aggregate root and it has a list of employee or an innumerable of employee, which are the members, would mean that, okay, if we need to change an employee, that should happen through this aggregate. However, the problem is that changing the date hired of an employee is not something that's regarding or that concerns the business rules and the validation and everything that concerns the project. So we have the project on one hand, but the project doesn't really have anything to do with when an employee was hired. So kind of like this doesn't really belong here. And I would like to go ahead and fix that. But before I get this, I want to say keeping an aggregate simple means keeping all the aggregate nodes and members that are actually or that are tied together in a certain way by some business rules. So what I would like to do here to actually solve the problem that we already have is I would like to create a new class and let me get here to this new class and I would like to create a class which is called project member because that's what we actually need on the project. We need a member. 
since project members uh, might actually change during or change state basically during the, the lifetime of the project and we want to keep track of that, I would like to make this to be an entity and let's say it's an entity on integer because we want to have this project members an entity and implementing or having the identifier as an ID and that's basically it. Then the other thing that I would do to keep things very simple right now is I would create a new class. Actually, I would create an enum which would be project role. And in this enum project role, I would say maybe project manager, let's say developer, let's say QA, and let's say BA. So we would have this type of project membership or project roles. Now we can come back here to our project member and what we'll need here as for properties, I'll have a public uh, string. Let's have the full name. So we want to have the name as a full name. And the other thing I also will keep this with a private setter. And then what we also want to do, we'll make this public and then project role. Cool. Now that we have actually done this, uh, we have this new project member, so we can go here to this project and kind of like do the replacements that we need. So first of all, to really have a project member, what we need is, well, we need to replace this with a project member. That's actually what we do. We also need to replace this in uh, the field that we have here. So it's a list of project member. And then actually the logic that we have here, add project member, We'll also need to change this here to be a project member that comes in and yeah, kind of like that would cover it. Now, what we have achieved by implementing this concept of project member is that we have kind of like decoupled actually the aggregate that we have initially and we have removed the idea of an employee out of our aggregate because the employee was not a business concept that was tied by any business rule to our project. Now the project member is a concept that is tied by some business rules to our project. So this means that at the other hand, we can go back to the employee and basically the employee would now become an aggregate root itself. And uh, yeah, then the employee we have, we pass this to the base and that should be it. We should have the identifier. So you see that what we had initially was actually just one aggregate, but it had a problem because it had a node or a member of the aggregate that was kind of like not really tied to the aggregate concept itself through business rules. So we have removed and now we have replaced it with the project member as an aggregate member of the project. And then we have extracted this employee to be its own aggregate root. And right now, what this means is that we have right now two aggregates, so two different consistency boundaries. So if we need to change anything regarding the employee that kind of like doesn't really matter for the project, we will handle this through the employee aggregate route. So we have this boundary of consistency, but if we need to change anything regarding the project members, like we do here, well, this, this belongs to this second aggregate and therefore it belongs to this second boundary of consistency. Cool. Now that we have this covered, let's go over to the next principle that we need to keep in mind. And that is always change the state of aggregate members through the aggregate route. Before we dive into it, if you enjoy this content, please don't be shy and hit the subscribe button and the thumbs up button. And if you have any question, please leave a comment below and I would be more than happy to get into a discussion. Now let's go into this second principle. And once again, it is the idea that we should change the state of aggregate nodes only through the aggregate route itself. What does this even mean? So for instance, if we go to this project member role and we think that there is this new business requirement that we should be able to change the role of a certain project member. For instance, we want to make sure that a, that a BA could become the project manager at a certain point. So we want to accommodate that. Now, the first instinct would be to come in consumers and use this project member and just set this new property of role to a new project role in them. Now, this is wrong in terms of DDD and this idea of aggregates, because once again, any state of an aggregate node should be handled by the aggregate root itself. 
and in just one second or a few seconds we'll also see exactly why. Of course right now we couldn't set this role to anything except for this uh, if we do it in this class because it has a private setter so the first thing that we'll do here is we'll change this to be internal and this means that right now from this assembly we can change or set the role to a new value and change the state of the project member. Now, where exactly we need to do that? Of course, as said, through the aggregate route. And this means that we always want to do that through this project, which is the aggregate route for the project member. Now, let's implement this functionality, and this would be a method similar to this one. Let me briefly walk you through what we have right now. So we have this change project member role. So we get a new project member, or we get the project member for which we want to change the role, and the new role that we want to set. And here's exactly or precisely why we need to perform state changes only through the aggregate route. Because when we do such changes, the main concept of the aggregate route is to ensure that all business rules and business requirements are met. And let's imagine, for instance, that the business rule or the business requirement in this instance would be that the only type of change in project role would be if a BA should become a project manager. So in this case, we have here some business rules that we validate through simple if statements. Now, of course, first of all, if we don't find a project member, we just return. So we cannot set the new role. But then there is the new business requirement and we say that if the new role is project manager and if the existing role of this project member is BA, in that case, and only in that case, we set this new role. So you see that we use the aggregate route once again as a boundary of consistency and this also means that the aggregate route should be responsible to ensure that at any given point in time, any action that is performed on any of the aggregate route nodes is compliant to the business logic or to the business rules, to the business validation and so on. And that's why it's really important to never change the state of aggregate root nodes except through the aggregate root itself. This being said, let's move over to the third principle and this is don't nest aggregates and I can't emphasize this enough, don't nest aggregates at all. To understand this, I have set up some new classes and a new aggregate and we have this project backlog aggregate that has some information here like the name and very importantly it has an enumerable of project backlog items which are the items that currently are well worked on the project and all the items will also have a status and the project backlog item I have created, created it as a value object. So that's the setup that we have right now. now. Of course the logic thing is to think okay if we have a project backlog well it should belong to a certain project. So we might be tempted to come here to this aggregate and say, for instance, something like that. So public project backlog. However, from the point of view of domain driven design and what aggregates are, this is totally wrong. Well, the reason for that is because the project backlog itself is also an aggregate root or it's the project backlog itself is an aggregate. And as we have defined aggregates are consistency boundaries. This means that, for instance, the project comes with its own internal business rules and requirements that we have discussed throughout this video. And this would kind of like violate this principle because the project backlog, it comes with its own logic. Now, for now, I have just implemented this add backlog item logic to this aggregate. The problem is here that it, the moment that we add this project backlog as an aggregate, to our project, which is another aggregate, we kind of like mess up these consistency boundaries. And instead of having two different or separate consistency boundaries, we just have one or we have just mixed everything up right now. There is still the idea that, for instance, in this project, we might need to actually hold a reference to what is the project backlog that is currently worked on. But since that project backlog is another aggregate, the only thing that we'll do here is, for instance, is we'll just have the reference as said, so it would be public int project backlog ID. Now in the project backlog itself, we might also need to have a reference to actually what is the current or what is the project to which this backlog belongs. 
So what we could do here is come once again and say public int project ID get and also let's use a private setter for that. And once again, right now, even though this project backlog aggregate probably needs to know that it belongs to a certain project, we just have this as a reference and we just use this identifier of the project and vice versa. The project needs to know about the backlog that it has. Then we can just have a reference here as this project backlog ID. And of course, you would ask the question, okay, that's all very, very nice, but there are some operations at certain points that we might need to apply and that kind of like they would need to take into consideration both the project you know, aggregate, but also the project backlog aggregate. And that's a very valid question. And in fact, if you subscribe to this channel, the very next video in this series would be about how we can actually solve this problem, which is a very important one by introducing a new concept or a, another pillar of the domain driven design concepts. So you want to be up to date when this new video comes out. To sum up, once again, there are really only three principles that you would have to keep in mind to master aggregate modeling. Of course, it will take a lot of practice, but if you stick to those principles and always try to ask yourself if you adhere to those principles when you are designing or modeling your aggregates, you are on a good journey to really master them. And these three principles are, first of all, keep the aggregate as simple as possible. Then the second one is handle state changes through the aggregate route. And the third principle is don't nest aggregate. If you enjoy this content, once again, hit the subscribe button, hit the thumbs up button, and also the notification bell to be up to date whenever we post new content on this Code Wrinkles channel. And if you think that there might be other people that might be interested in this content, don't be shy and feel free to share that with them wherever you see fit, uh, with your friends, on social media, on forums, wherever you think that there is anybody that might benefit from this content, don't be shy and share it, and they would be thankful. If you have any questions, please hit or please go to the comment section and leave your question there. Or if you have anything to say or just want to give some feedback, also go to the comments and write a comment and I would be more than happy to get in touch with you. This being said, thank you very much for watching and until the next time, I wish you the very best.